Welcome to episode two of the Two Chicks Homestead podcast with Nate and Aaron, where we talk about homesteading and living on a small piece of land. So Aaron, what are you drinking today? I'm drinking more of the uh, Tennessee Legend peanut butter chocolate whiskey in some homemade apple cider that we made last year from my brother's farm in town. And you can find him at the Schoolhouse Farm on Facebook if you want to look up and see what he's doing there. Awesome. I'm having some Whiskey Acres Blue Popcorn Limited Edition, and they're up in DeKalb, Illinois. It's about 20 minutes from our place, and grow all their stuff on their property and uh, distill all their own whiskey, and it's really good. I've been there once where I had to wait in line for a special... Oh, I remember that. That was funny. It was raining. <laughs> I think course. that was actually this one, the blue blue popcorn. Yeah, it was raining and cold and gross, but... Yeah. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, how networking can help out your homestead. Uh, one of the things that we were able to do was process a hog. So we're going to go through all the steps that we had with doing that. And we'll start off with the first hog that we did. Aaron, how did we end up with that first hog? Well, I was scrolling on Facebook, as you can imagine most people do. And our local farmer, Family Farm Meats, that is located right in Hinkley, um, posted that she was not able to find like a cooler or a locker. Yeah, the locker dates. Yeah. Yep, for a hog and wanted to know if anybody wanted one. And so I sat there and thought about it going, there's no way we can do this. But I texted Nate, of course, and said, do you want to get a hog and try and figure out what we're doing? Because she would be taking it to the locker, yep. and they would chill and kill. Yeah, or kill, kill and chill. Kill and chill, yeah. Kill and chill. And so Nate, of course, said, uh, yeah, let's yep. do this. Yep. It was a 200-pound it was hog, hanging weight. Um, we got it for a really good price because she couldn't get a locker date. And then all we had to do was drive up to Rockford and pick up the hog on the way home. And the uh, funny story is we didn't have a pickup truck back then, so we had to uh, borrow your dad's pickup truck. Well, we were borrowing it because I think my SUV had broken. Yes. So we were just kind of <laughs> using it and went, hmm. This is pretty good timing. They would never know. Exactly. And that's how we ended up with the hog here. <laughs> so it just happened that it was the one of the warmest days of the year. It was close to 90 degrees out the day we did that hog. And it was in September, so it wasn't really the middle of summer. We thought we were playing it safe. It was still warm. It still took a long time, a lot of scrambling around. We brought the iPad out, and then we watched the Bearded Butcher's uh, processing video for the hog. Yep, we had the tables and everything because we had done meat chickens yep. before that. So we had it all set up in the garage. We borrowed some tools from our neighbor. Yep, we borrowed the slicer from the neighbor for the bacon, and then the... Uh, the grinder we traded for tomato sauce. Yep. We, so that's ours. Yep, and then we got the mixer. That big 10-pound uh, yes. mixer. Yes, because we did um, end up making some Italian Italian sausage. I think breakfast sausage. So, yeah, we brought home this halved hog and looked at it and uh, was kind of hoping it would do itself. But yeah. we watched, yeah, the bearded butchers on an iPad on pause going, okay, go. Okay, wait, stop. Go back. Go. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next cut do I make? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of the ones that we didn't do correctly, no. we just ground. No. Yeah, we we ended up with a lot of ground hog from that, and it just worked out best that way. I mean, we whatever we didn't make on the right cut, we just threw through the grinder and turned into sausage. Yep, and we did end up saving the leaf lard. Yep. So we used that for baking, and all of the lard we rendered ourselves, and I still use that. Yep. But yeah, this was um, this was interesting for our kids to come out and see the eyeballs and the teeth and the kidneys and the kidneys <laughs> and 
Yeah, I mean, it was nice because our oldest doesn't like blood, so at least there was none of that. So right, right. It was kind of a nice, a nice bigger animal introduction. Yep, absolutely. The biggest problem is with the hog, it took us over 12 hours over the course of two days to break this hog down. And, of course, being it was 90 degrees out, we were scrambling back and forth from the freezer to keep the meat cool to getting it out on the table and cutting it up. And we actually had made a mistake with one of the front quarters, and we had let it freeze too hard, or freeze too much overnight, and then we couldn't process it or get it cut up the next day. I'm not, And I'm not even sure what happened if it thawed and we just got busy and it was gonna I was gonna come back to it but it ended up molding yeah so we lost that part yep it ended up going bad uh, so we lost the one of the front quarters but I mean even at that we still paid close to about a dollar a pound for this hog and that lasted us all year on top of the chicken and the rabbit yep absolutely so and then the uh, Second hog was a little bit easier. Well, yeah, we told um, the owner of Family Farm Meats pretty much right away after this one, uh, get us a slot for next time because we yep. want to do this exact thing again. And so she heard from me all year going, don't forget, don't forget. But we <laughs> planned that one for November. Exactly. That was a much better date. I think it was about 40 degrees out, maybe 50. Uh, and we were able to knock that hog out without the help of YouTube in about, I think we had it processed in five hours and then the grinding took an extra hour. Yep, So but we got it all done in a day. Yep, we got it all done in one day and the reason we did that is we had a friend come over that heard us talking about getting this hog and wanted to you know come out and see how it was done. He's a farm guy from a couple towns over, you know, kind of lives on a little bit bigger piece of property and noticed we were uh or had heard that we were going to do this so he decided to come out and give us a hand with it we we ended up getting 50 pounds of ground mm -hmm. the ribs all the uh all the pork chops and then we got the cheek meat for the tacos out. Yes, that was one thing that was new this time that we saw um, the farm that we got our rabbits from posted about cheek meat tacos right before we got this hog. And it, I made a mental note of making sure that we saved that cheek meat. Yep, and I remember getting that out. And that was uh, pretty easy. So, yeah, the second one went a lot easier. We ended up making our own bacon. I think we ended up with about 15 pounds, 15, 20 pounds of bacon. Uh, we smoked that ourselves on the smoker with uh, hickory. Uh, one side, we started uh, nice bright and early in the morning at 8 a.m. And I think it finished up about 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. And it was cold. It was cold that day, but it was fun. It was mm -hmm. nice being able to sit out the back window, watch the smoker go, yep. walk, and then just kind of go out there, check the temperature, come back in, run back out, look at the temperature again, throw some more coals in. So it was definitely worth it. Yep. The third hog, I got a message from a fellow homesteading friend of ours that asked if we uh, wanted another hog. And at first I was thinking, absolutely not. Our freezers are thankfully full and we just don't really have the room. We don't need it. But the more I thought about it, we don't want to go to waste. Right. So the story was that a lady that she didn't even know stopped by her place because she does have pigs and said, I have a pig or a hog with a broken, with a broken, with a broken leg. They're going to the butcher in April, mm -hmm. but we didn't know this, that the USDA says you cannot bring in an animal that's not coming in on its own power. Right. So they can't legally process, process that. Right. So she was looking for somebody to do it or wanted to do it yep. and um our friend didn't want to but she said i know somebody who might and that was us yeah so that that message came through at about 10 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. we hem and hawed about it for a little bit 
And then I told Aaron, well, let's go ahead and do it. Figure out what they want for the hog, and we'll pay them for their time raising the hog, the feed that they have fed it, and we'll take care, take it off their hands and take care of it. So 5 o'clock Friday night, we are headed over to their place, this farm that had the hog, uh, with the girls in tow, they were in the back of the, you know, back seat of the pickup truck as we're running over there. Well, and before that, we had to go get that. Oh yeah, the gambrel. Yes. So yeah. we, I talked the girls into going to the feed store because we had to go buy a gambrel, and they were all excited about it. Once we had the gambrel, I called our friend that was here last time when we processed the second hog and said, "Hey, short notice, do you want to come over and we'll process another hog?" I'll give you a, you know, a day's notice because we got to get this thing to our house. And he said yes, and then the next day he ended up coming over and helping us process the hog. But in the meantime, we had to get over to this house, get the hog out of the pen, dispatch the hog, which the farmers had already you know, said they would help us with. So they ended up dispatching him. Uh, then we drug him out of the pen, loaded him into an end loader, and then brought the end loader to the barn, and then we strung the hog up, uh, gutted the hog, and then once we had them all gutted and cleaned up, we threw them in the back of the pickup truck and then brought them home. Yeah, and the girls, um, they did really good. Yep. It was it was a big change. We didn't have this planned for the day, mm-hmm. so it was kind of nice that they uh, were able to go along with it. They made some new cat friends at this farm and yep, yep. now they want to go back there every day yep that little cat that was sitting on her, <laughs> on uh the oldest shoulders was uh definitely worth seeing that for the day yep. that was that was kind of nice as we had posted the first two ho- the first two hogs that we did then our friend knew that we would be capable of doing this third hog on a short notice now when we got up in the morning we were not planning on processing a hog on a Tuesday night where Aaron is heading out of town the next week or the next day with the girls in tow to go out and have some fun. But we scrambled and we got it done and start to finish. We were able to get this hog skin, uh, gutted, skinned, and processed in the freezer in about four, four and a half hours, which was pretty good for us. Yep. You know, not taking six hours to take care of this thing when we have short notice, we have stuff going on. And I think one of the biggest things is that we do have animals on our land that reproduce and right. we get meat from them and it's all from our property. But it doesn't mean that the the food that you get from other places isn't as important. Right, right. There, being on the half acre that we have, there is no way that we could physically produce every single piece of food that comes through our house. You need to be able to network and make friends and, and barter for things that you want for your house that you can't produce. Like, we can't raise hogs here. We like having pork. We like having the rabbits, and we have a ton of eggs. Well, we have to go to outside means to be able to get the pork. But we still know that it's local. Yes. I mean, it's from our county. Yes. It's, you know, we know exactly where it was raised and the people that were raising it. Yep, absolutely. It is Pretty much everything is within 10 or 15 miles of our place. It has been pretty cool, though seeing our kids from the first hog where my little one i mean she was out there with a bowl of, a popcorn. Bowl of popcorn watching us yep. <laughs> you know do all the cuts my oldest no interest yep none. the second one she wanted to see some of the weird stuff like the teeth and yep. the eyeballs and yep. she saw all the stuff that we bring out to the coyotes in the bucket yep and this third one she was right there yep. i mean she was out there she talking was- to everybody uh-huh. Yep, she was out there pretty much all night long, asking questions, looking at stuff, and she's seeing things she normally wouldn't see or like mm-hmm. to see for that fact. I mean, 
and she has definitely grown up mm -hmm. being out here at this house. Yeah, it's it's amazing how she's just changed. Yeah. I mean, she was four when we moved out here. Yep, she's four. She's now going to be nine here coming up soon. Yeah. And she has definitely grown up and gotten used to things and yep. understand things happen around here and has kind of grown used to it. Yep. <laughs> so it's just been kind of nice that we've gotten to a point where this wasn't total anxiety you know, right, right away thinking about, holy cow, we need to go do this tonight. I'm freaking out. It was just, okay, we've done this. Yep. This is a smaller one that we've done. We just got to go do it, and it will work out. Absolutely. And it went a lot quicker than we had planned. We were able to get the hog uh, skinned late at night one night. It was about 10 degrees. And then it hung out there overnight. And when I got home the next day, uh, at five o'clock, everybody showed up that wanted to show up. And we actually had four people show up. And three of them had never seen a hog processed and they wanted to be here to learn how to do it. So we walked them through making the cuts that we made and why we do it. And they went away seeing somebody process a hog and realizing that it really is not that hard to do and pretty much anybody can do it if they want to. I mean, if we can seriously do all this in our garage, yes, anybody can Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody, you know, it's... So the, the tools that we have for processing hog is a really good set of knives. That's important because mm -hmm. you need to be able to Cut, make the cuts yeah. easily. We have a overhead chain hoist from Harbor Freight. I think it was like 70 bucks, give yeah. or take. And that's bolted to the rafters of our ceiling. And then we have the gambrel, which is $7 or what is it? Seven, yeah, eight it was bucks. Seven fifty or something. Yeah. Crazy. And we got that at Farm and Fleet here in town. And then you have, you're going to need a grinder. And you're going to need, um, you know, some way to mix the meat up. Either you buy the if, mixer. If you're putting in the, the seasonings. Right. If you're doing the seasoning, yeah. You would need the mixer. If you just want to do straight sausage and call it a day, so be it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily need a... Um, you don't necessarily need a slicer if you have a good set of knives... You can go to town on it and, you know, be a little bit thicker than you want, but it is possible. Um, and then the other thing you need definitely is a smoker. We have a 20-inch uh, stand-up smoker with a couple levels in it in the water tray, and that's what we were able to do our bacon on last year. And we're going to continue to do bacon on that thing, and it's definitely already paid for itself doing mm -hmm. just a couple pieces of bacon. Yep. And we get a lot of bacon. Yeah. But kids like bacon. Yes. I like bacon. And then you get bacon grease, which is... Absolutely. A little bit of for bacon. everything. <laughs> bacon, bacon grease and some eggs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yep. that's where it is. Yes. All right. So we're going to end it right there, and we will see you guys next time. All right. See you on the homestead, where something is always growing, eating, or cooking.